Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tea with Crema. My name is Chris. I'll be one of your hosts today, and I'm joined by my best friend, Emma. What's up, y'all? <laughs> welcome, Emma. Oh, goodness. They gave me sound effects on here. It's going to be a mess. So if you uh, see me mess. just clicking around making noises, that's me. I found them. They work in now. You know what's so crazy is because we had an entire episode dedicated to us playing with sounds. Like, how much easier would it have been if we just had it built into the platform already? I'm just saying, Riverside, you're, wow, really impressive already. We still have to find the air horn, though. So disappointing. But yeah. we're looking. It's almost there. In any case, today's episode is all about detoxing from social media, a cleanse of sorts from the social medias. I know it's something that people have done before. It's not like we are inventing this wheel, but we definitely hopped on the bandwagon and tried our own detoxes and cleanses from the social medias. So before we get started, Emma, what tea did you bring to the episode today? Today, I am drinking a Spanish orange by Tea Can. Oh, I just got that now. I think it's like, anyway, besides the point. Um, it's a fruity sweet blend. It's actually really yummy. It's a fruit infusion, orange peach infusion. Mm-hmm. I like the taste of it. I don't like the aftertaste, but I think it might be because it's still steeping and it's only a five to eight brew time. Interesting. So you left it in like, too long? Yeah. So like the taste of it is nice. In the front end, and then at the back end, it just becomes kind of dry in my throat. Mm. Yeah. What are you drinking? Today, I have a blackberry basil tea from Oregon Tea Traders, and it is supposed to be a darker, richer green tea, because I know Mm -hmm. typically you think green tea, it's like a lighter, almost summer kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. And so this one's a little bit on the darker, richer, more fall type. And I mean, they did it. It's supposed to be fragrant, fruity, and vegetal with a little bit of spice. But I think I'm really just getting the fragrant and vegetal. So I'm getting a lot of the basil. It's very herbal, uh, a little earthy. And I don't know. I'm not really getting the fruit. But also the only real fruit source is blackberry leaf, which not blackberry. It's the leaf of blackberry. Oh, so I'm not sure where the fruit was supposed to come from. But it's it's a chill tea. I don't know if I would like order it itself, but it's cool. Hmm. Okay. Jumping into our episode today, we're talking about a social media detox. I know I did one earlier this year over the summer. I'm sure everyone noticed my absence from social media when I went from posting zero times a month to posting <laughs> zero more Negative. times a month. Negative, Negative times, five a month. times a month. <laughs> I started taking posts away from other people. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. And then I think you did your detox. In fact, you just finished up much more recently, like less than twenty four hours ago. Yeah, and it was like I actually had people reaching out, like, "Hey, are you still alive?" <laughs> because, which is not a probably a something to brag about if I'm on the socials that often that people can recognize that I'm not there anymore. Um, but yeah, so I just got off of mine. I finished it. It was a good experience, but we're going to get into that today. Before we start about like the process of the detox, what apps exactly were you trying to detox from? I really focused on getting off of Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I had to ah. think of all the social media apps. Um, I did not. I think I also included LinkedIn technically. Like, <laughs> Technically, I don't think on this time I didn't include Reddit. Or I don't know. Honestly, this was a while ago. Actually, I think I did include Reddit. I think I just stayed off of all of the social medias. I know you were surprised because you're like, you're still using YouTube, but I didn't. YouTube's not a social media site in my mind. It's like videos. Yeah. I also watch like documentaries on <laughs> YouTube. So I don't know. It's, just, it's not social media. I'm learning stuff on YouTube. So it is what it is. Yeah. But those are those are like the big ones. So like I don't have a TikTok, so I did not have to not use TikTok. Mm-hmm. And, I, and another caveat, if people sent me 
like always, because I, again, I don't have a TikTok. So if people sent me TikToks, I still watch them in the same way that I still watch them now, but still don't have a TikTok. Yeah. The ones that I was detoxing specifically from was Instagram and TikTok, which were like my two largest, like taking up my screen time. So those are the two that I was focusing on. I'm not super active on Twitter. So like that was really easy to give up. I have not used Snapchat. I think I like opened Snapchat once when Chris had like posted and it gave me a notification and then I forgot that it was a social media, but I got so confused when I opened the app that I was like, I don't even think this counts as cheating because like I'm confused. Where did all of this stuff come from? Um, so <laughs> it looks very it's a, different from a yeah, few years ago. It looks very different from 2012 Snapchat so or 2016 Snapchat. So yeah, there's that. And then I was, yes, I wasn't really big on Twitter or Snapchat. Facebook, I was like kind of on, but then I just completely just deleted the app. I usually, I mostly use Facebook for its pictures though, like throwback pictures and stuff like that. That's, it's a great photo Mm. storage area. So that's Mm -hmm. normally where I get all of that from. Um, But yeah, the two I was focusing on was Instagram and TikTok. Mm. And then our timelines were also different for different reasons. Because I did mine in July, because that's the one month of the year that I'm not formally working. Mm-hmm. And then that was also not long after the Roe v. Wade decision. There was a lot going on. It was like, it was the Roe v. Wade decision, the decision to not codify gay marriage. And they were like coming back to back to each other, I feel like. And then I remember like at one point you were, you were like, I, I can't, I can't actually like in good conscience and like good self care keep reading about these things because it's not it's not helping myself it was basically just like not helping your sanity i remember you saying something like that to that Mm -hmm. effect i was just annoyed reading about it all the time first of all it's like the only topics that people were talking about and it might have just been people being hyperbolic about well now they're going to come for this and they're going to come for that and all these other things and it's just it was just a lot to have to even think about and i was just off it was the one month of the year that I'm not at work and thusly don't have those things on the top of my brain. And so I just didn't want to go from dealing with stress management from work to now dealing with just life stress management. So I was just, no, I kicked it. I was like, I'm going to just get off of this. And I said it for the whole month of July because I was like, well, I'll be off this whole month. So I'd like to focus on other things that are not on the social media. Mm-hmm. And it's not like I was on social media that much before. Again, I no one was like, are you okay? Because I was gone from social media. There's, <laughs> no one reached out to me. It was fine. I don't post anything to begin with. So it was just a matter. I just read a lot of social media. So I'm. You're a digester. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it was just a matter of like, I'm done listening to these topics. And so I just got off for a month. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't think I actually had like a reason. Like, why did I do September? Um, it was more like Chris was like, Hey, I detoxed in July. You should detox so we can do an episode about it. And I was like, okay. And then I think we were talking about it in August. So I was like, well, I can't do it now. Might as well just wait till September. And you're like, I mean, you could start tomorrow and then be done mid September. And I was like, nope, I'll start September first. <laughs> it was all fun and games until I started seeing your usage reports. Yeah which was like ridiculous, which we'll get into at a certain point, maybe. Um, But yeah, those usage reports are really bad. But September was good because life update. My husband is now in Japan. I don't know if I said that yet. Thank you. Sound effects. That would have been a great air horn moment, but we don't have Uh. it yet. Yeah, so you're just going to have to deal with my air horn. But yeah, so my, you know, Isaac is officially in Japan. I think it was helpful because I had to prepare for him to get here, just like mentally prepare. And like, because I was spending so much time on social media, I was not taking good care of my home. So (laughs) that also had to happen. I was also really exhausted coming back from being in the States all summer and then trying to transition into being home. So it was a good time for me to really just like recenter myself before Isaac got here. How nice. I'm glad you got that experience. Mm -hmm. So you did yours all September, like September 1st through the 30, however many days, 30? 30th. Was it the 30th? And I know, because again, I had the rule of if someone sent me something during that time, I still looked at it 
Mm -hmm. Was that similar for you? Yeah, because my sister, like, sends me TikToks every day. And it's usually, like, Japan stuff. But also, like, disclaimer, it's things I've seen already. So (laughs) she'll, like, send me videos. And sometimes it's, like, new stuff. But, like, I'll watch it. And then I would, like, exit out. And so that was kind of hard, too, is, like, I feel like a lot of times people would send me stuff and I'd want to keep scrolling and I just like mm. had to like have that self control, like, okay, I'm going to watch the video and scroll out. And then like Isaac and I always like share TikToks back and forth as well. And so when he got to Japan, I was like, I don't know if I told you, but I'm actually on a social media detox. And he was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Like I didn't realize. And he was sending me all these videos, you know, I got a little bit better. And then also now he's like in person. So he can just kind of show me his phone versus sending me something. And then Chris, you normally send me tweets so yeah i would like see it but i wouldn't actively choose to then keep going and like watching which i think sometimes is how i got into the rabbit hole was that someone would send me something and then i just like continuously begin to scroll just like mindlessly so you didn't delete tiktok i like moved it away from my app screen you should have deleted it because when you don't have the app you don't there's no scroll option oh it just like plays it plays in a browser uh, which is weird because when Isaac sends it to me, it just plays. Or no, like it plays in a browser. It doesn't go mm-hmm. straight to my TikTok. But I think that's because he has an Android. But when my sister sends it to me, it goes into the app. Yeah, I would recommend. So to even eliminate that temptation, should you continue or do this again one day in the future, delete the yeah. whole app. And you don't have to like delete mm. it, delete it. You can just offload it. So then you still don't have access to the app itself. But yeah, yeah. it'll just open in a browser. And then like you literally cannot watch other videos. Yeah. And if you try to watch other videos, it'll make you download the app. Ah, I see, I see, I see. But no, it was really easy after just like that first week or so. I was able to just kind of like, like I was telling Chris that I had in that first couple of days, like I would just like not even thinking about it, just super mindlessly just open up my home screen and go straight to where TikTok is on my home screen. And it was like one of those things where I was like, oh, wow, like I'm just like not even thinking about it anymore. Like it was just an unintentional movement of like, my brain is bored, let's go and do this thing. And so it took like a couple of days of unlearning and realizing like, okay, let's open up something else or like, let's go do something else. Like, let's not focus on the apps, which was really difficult. The question is without the apps, what were you doing in your free time? Oh God. So instead of my six hours being on TikTok, it was reading. I actually read after I had done my social media reviews, I actually read 10 books this past month, which I didn't realize I was reading that often. But again, like it's an hour commute both ways from work. Yeah. So I read, I read some books. I started some series. Oh, I finished the A League of Their Own series on Amazon Prime, which is really good. I would recommend to a friend. What did you do? Cause it was also July. So like you also were like at home a lot more. You know what I didn't do? I didn't read more. (laughs) I don't recall having finished any books in the month of July. But also, I wasn't spending significant amounts of time on social media to begin with. Yeah. So, again, I was not on social media to avoid specific topics, specifically, as opposed to reduce time spent on my phone. My impulse control as it relates to my phone is not social media. There are, like, two games that I play on my phone, and that's, (laughs) that's, like, what I do to kind of be mindlessly on my phone. And so even that went down a little bit. And like generally my phone use has kind of really gone down a lot since then. I mean, not a lot. I just feel like I've only been using my phone in the past year or so for more work stuff. Wow. wow. Is there a boo sound effect? (laughs) There's no boo. Plot twist. There is a boo. I've just been hiding it. Womp, womp, (laughs) womp. It's like, ah, oh, man, I just do work stuff on my phone. I don't know. It just, and I then, so then I build up a thing where like things that I associate with work, I then associate not negative feelings around, but like work feelings around. Yeah. And so then when I'm not at work, I don't want to do those things anymore. Mm-hmm. So I actually developed a distaste for screens because my last year teaching, I had three screens up. It would be like my laptop screen and then a second monitor, and then the projector would be a third screen. And then this job, I have two screens up, and sometimes also my laptop. And so I've just found that I get like eye fatigue, I guess. Mm. I haven't even been watching, I haven't been watching as much TV. I've not been playing as many video games. Like I just, ugh, 
I don't like looking at screens when I go home anymore because it just, I feel like that's all I'm doing all day is just spreadsheets and applications and windows and move this over there and put that over there. And so sometimes even just looking at screens is irritating. And so I have been doing more Spanish learning. I've been really working on my Spanish acquisition. I've been training for 5K Mm -hmm. that I'll be running in October. And I've been out doing more things. So trying restaurants and I went to my first concert recently and just like having brunches and things with people. And then I've also been doing a lot more work and stuff. So it just, my phone has not been, it's been more of like a place of organization for Mm. those things that I'm doing, but I have not been on my phone obsessively. Mm. And I feel like that is your love language is like quality time. Like you really do value experiences Mm -hmm. rather than like, and even in those experiences too, like, you know, everyone is pretty like uh, disconnected, not on their phones and stuff when we hang out. Yeah, I fully get that. Mine was more so I just knew I was spending so much time doing social media that I needed to like get off of it for, and it wasn't even like I was having like ill feelings towards social media either. Like, oh, I can see so-and-so is doing this with their life. And like, why am I not doing that? No, I just like genuinely like seeing people's pictures of what's going on and being nosy. I think that I'm just like a naturally nosy person. So (laughs) seeing like things like that. And, you know, TikTok was also one of those ways for me to just kind of like see what's going on in the world and see what people are doing. But also on top of that, like instead of getting my news from TikTok or getting my news from Instagram, which there was a study that this new generation is actually getting their news on Instagram more often than news sites. I was like, hmm, that's a little worrisome. But I was reading the news a lot more often and I was like completing the New York Times crossword puzzle. (laughs) Which is like, also when I realized that I know some words, but not all the words. So it's important for me to keep my brain moving and trying the crossword. That's also what I was doing. I get my news from CNN because I didn't want to keep getting it from social media. Mm, Yeah. Because again, like part of it is like you, like a social media network is a curated group of people. So sometimes you just be reading very limited perspectives. It's also just like those buzzwords, right? It's those like fast hitting, like what's going to get me the most clicks, right? And then people just read those like 10 by 10 word slides versus reading the entire news article. So we're like pulling the most outrageous or the most sensational news instead of actually reading what's going on. See, I just pulled my report from this past week. Would you like to guess what my most used app was? Reddit. No. YouTube. Nope. Oh, what was it? Maps. Getting to and from work. Literally, I'm like, it's maps and messages. That's it. I went from my most used being TikTok. And I think I had actually sent Chris a picture at the beginning because I was like, oh, this is just to like, for reference. Okay, so when I started on August 30th, my daily average was at five hours and 17 minutes with my TikTok being at three hours average on average. Per day? Oh, no, that was in a day. That was one day. That was my my last day. I was on there for two hours and 49 minutes on TikTok and then on Instagram for an hour and 18 minutes. So almost five hours of my day just on that day on social media. You could literally watch like two or three movies in that time. Yeah. And then, so that was one day. Well, I can see like some point in the middle of the year cleanse, you spent 15 hours on Libby in a week. Uh, yes. Oh, I think that might have been the week that I was picking up Isaac, though, which was a two hour train ride to the airport and then a two hour train ride back. So this girl was on. She was reading them books. She wouldn't play when she said that she read was, them 10 books. I read them 10 books. Like it was like I was reading a lot because I had nothing else to do. Right. It was either that or I watched TV. I mean, I could have gone for a walk and stuff, but it is so bloody hot in, in Japan in September. It just barely started getting cool. So just reading books. Last week was I was on there for 12 hours on Libby. <laughs> At that point, you should have just got a Kindle. Uh, that's And that's why I keep saying, like, I was like, oh, maybe I should get a Kindle. But then I was like, well, I don't know if it's, like, worth getting a Kindle versus having my phone. So Kindle users out there, if you believe that your Kindle is more superior to using your phone, let me know. Clearly, you filled your time with reading. I filled my time because it didn't take – I just didn't have as much, like, time to play with in terms of transitioning activities. So you read through your time and I have taken up new hobbies in Spanish and writing. 
Yeah. So that's what we did. Do you have any other like things that you felt like you learned by not being on social media for a month? Either about yourself or about your phone, because I discovered new features when I was on my cleanse. <laughs> I did not discover new features, but I discovered that I was so subconsciously doing things that like sometimes I would see something funny and be like, oh my God, this would be so funny as an Instagram story. And then like take out my phone to like post as though I was going to post a story and I was like, wait, what am I doing? Like, it's just like so ingrained in my life that I just want to share everything which again, like it doesn't need to be shared. But I also value having memories stored in these places. Like I think that have as someone who like whose parents took so many pictures and like now I am able to see it as an adult, you know, seeing those pictures and things like that, I value like having those memories somewhere. So that's where I kind of felt like I was like, oh, you know, I kind of missed being on social media. But then I realized that I didn't need it. You know, it wasn't serving me. And I think that you have to be very intentional in your social media usage, right? You have to like have this like, I don't think everyone has to have a purpose, but like as they're consuming social media, I think it probably is better to have an intention behind it. Because I mean, I have pictures on my phone. They're not on social media and I still have memories. But I will say I also like don't have memories sometimes because I I just... I do tend to just be very present and then I forget. And then after I was like, oh, that would have been a really fun video. Oh, well, I lived it. I lived through it. It's so funny because one of my girlfriends, we had gone to, it was one of the girls that I had traveled to Europe with. Mm-hmm. And during that Europe trip, she, the entire time, she's like, no, guys, we're like living in the moment. Like, this is like time for us to like live here. And, you know, like we're never going to be 22 years old again in Europe. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Fast forward. We're 28 now. And she goes, guys, I don't remember anything about Spain. (laughs) I was like, yeah, little miss, I don't want to be taking pictures and stuff because I'm going to remember everything up here. This is my mental camera. I was like, now what? And she goes, I just like kind of regret that I didn't take more pictures because the rest of the girls, the rest of the four of us, we all got our pictures. But she was so adamant that she didn't want any single pictures that she was like, she's mostly in just the group shots. And so she's like, yeah, now I kind of regret only having group shots and none of just like myself. (laughs) And I think that's like almost like the other extreme side of it where, again, I don't put it on social media, but I have it. Like it exists on my phone. Like it's there. Mm -hmm. I have pictures. I have things that I've done, but it's not on Instagram or Snapchat. That's not where I choose to store those memories. And so, Yeah. yeah, on that case, we should definitely talk to your friend and be like, hey, Similar to like a point and click camera, our parents didn't hang those pictures outside of our house for everyone to see. (laughs) They just kept them so that we could look at them later. Which is so funny because she didn't have like, she didn't have an iPhone like us when we went on the trip. She just had like an Android, but she had like an actual, she had borrowed her brother's like professional camera. So then I was like thinking about it and I was like, wait, you had your brother's camera. She goes, oh my God. I think my pictures are still on there. And I was like, this girl. <laughs> I hope she found them. Cause I, I, that's the, the key difference for me is like, yeah, I do. I don't want to be that person who then never, I don't have memories or pictures of anything. Mm-hmm. So I do try to be better at least taking like pictures of stuff. It's not even intentional. I just am one of those people that I just get really caught up in the feelings and the energy of where I am. And I forget to take pictures. Yeah, which I don't think is a bad thing because then you don't want to be that person that's like taking pictures of everything and then... And then you do sort of kind of miss out. You look back and you're like, why did I Why did I take those pictures? Why is there a picture of this tree 20 times? (laughs) Yeah, you just got to find like your balance on it. I did learn in that time how to set up the... So I use my focus settings on my phone now Mm. more aggressively. So my work and personal focus and sleep focus times are actually scheduled out and predictable Mm. and I am now using that feature of my phone a lot more. I have permanently removed social media apps from my home screen. Nice. So the only way I can get to them is if I like intentionally go to them, which I don't and it's a small extra step, but that extra step goes a long way from deterring me from (laughs) trying to find them. Yeah. Because that's the thing, like I'm not trying to find anything. It's if it's not there a, it doesn't, there's no visual reminder of like, huh, I wonder what's happening on Facebook. So then I have to have the literal thought, huh, I wonder what's happening on Facebook or what's happening on Instagram. And then I've turned off the notifications anyway. And so if I don't intentionally have the thought of going to the social media, I just don't go. 
I, that's a good tip about the focuses, though, the foci. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you can like schedule people to be able to reach you during different times. Uh, I just saw that. I just looked at the, the, the setting right now. So I think I need to go set up mine now as well. Mm-hmm. So I have my work one. I have my personal one. I have the sleep one. Nice. Ready to go. Small things that your phone can do to help you disconnect from your phone. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get an ad in about two weeks about how to further regulate phone usage because that's how the internet <laughs> works. Phone's listening to me right now. Mr. NSA man is listening to me and my griping. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're done with your social media cleanse, how do you feel? Do you feel like you're taking anything moving forward? Are you just going to be like, that was cute. And then three hours of TikTok later. <laughs> you know what's so funny is because like I woke up this morning and was like, oh, I can like go on the social medias. And then I like went on it and I was like, actually, what am I doing? Let me just go like do my thing. I don't actively think about it anymore. You know, I don't actively think about like, oh, let me go to TikTok and like, let me scroll there. Facebook has been like more of a place for like family news and things like that. So I, I missed out on a lot of things that had gone on, which was probably not the best thing for me to unplug from, but it needs to happen. I'm setting boundaries. I think moving forward, I will definitely be more intentional. I don't know yet exactly what is my intention with social media. So I think that's going to be my next step is like setting what are my intentions in terms of using it. You know, like instead of just being a passive user of the social media. Sounds like we might need to set you up a parent monitoring account where we limit <laughs> your usage of these apps. The one that it, like cuts you off at 10 p.m. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm about to be like, okay, Emma, you get 15 minutes of TikTok a day. Better make sure those videos are worth it. Highly curated. Facts. I feel like as someone who already didn't really engage that often, did you feel like you learned anything or like, did you feel like... I think I have, I've learned tools for, again, regulating other people now (laughs) 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 on how to set those things up. So like if I were to ever have a kid or anything like that, I would know how to do all of these things. Even did research on apps that control app usage. So it's all there. So if anyone's like, hey, I want to, you know, have a conversation about limiting my kids' social media use or just app use in general, I got you. I got recommendations. I've read articles. I know the settings that you can go into on your phone, all that. But I enjoyed it. It was cool. It was cute. I feel like it didn't really end for me. So like, yes, I use it. But even now, it's just with, it's so much more limited. And I also don't have as much time for it. I don't know how people spend... (laughs) Six hours on Instagram and TikTok. (laughs) Literally. So Emma, before we're done, based on your one month cleanse, how would you rate it, your Yelp review, and would you recommend it to a friend? Yes. Five stars out of five would recommend to a friend. If you are someone like me who has been struggling with reining in their uh, social media time, yeah, I would recommend it to anyone. What about you? What's your final rating? I would agree. It would probably be five stars. And I think part of it is because I think if you think about it, what oftentimes like what are you actually gaining on your time in social media? Are you gaining a skill? Are you gaining knowledge? Like what are you actually gaining? And then even with the little time that I did transition over, I've been gaining things with that time that I've reinvested. Mm. So I'm gaining another language proficiency. I'm gaining Uh, physical skill proficiency. And so I sometimes think like, okay, try it out, cut it out, and then see kind of where your natural inclinations are in terms of do you start gaining in other areas? So that would be my recommendation. I would definitely five out of five stars. Also, if you're a social media influencer and that is your job, like obviously keep doing what you're doing. Don't be doing detoxes because you're going to get in the way of your coin. (laughs) I just want to point that out. So if that is your gain is the coin and the followers. Yes, keep doing you. But as people who are nobodies on the social on the social media, Chris and I both decided to choose that. Mhm. Well, Emma, what time is it? Rapid fire question. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, but now it's weird. Yeah, because yeah, then it's like you're still waiting for the <laughs> air horn. <laughs> We're going to find the air horn now that like there's a little easy button on this new. P- I like it. I'm going to find it. But any case, any case, what is your question? My question is if you could choose to be the same age forever, what age would it be? 21. <laughs> 21. 
like my 21 year old body or like just the age 21? I think just the age. So like maybe you have like your 27 year old thoughts and experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be 21 because I feel like that body that I had was still young enough to be adaptable. You know, I still had the energy of youth and things. Yeah, but it's still also like a mature body. (laughs) Although I would be worried about like brain chemistry because I know your brain's not always done until 25. So maybe like I wish there was an exact way to like measure your brain and then there would be like a little ding done. And then I'd be like, okay, I'm done. This is where we can stop now. Like one of those turkey, the turkey pops. (laughs) Boop, your brain's done. I think I would be either 23 or 25, probably 25 because I was very depressed at 23. (laughs) So I think 25. For me personally, because like I still like even though that was only three years ago, my legs and my knees did not crack as often as they do now. She said the knees be cracking. <laughs> you know, I would like I would fall and I would get right back up. I fell this past weekend and it it took me a little minute to get back up. I'm not going to lie. So 25. OK, my question is, what is something that you have a hard time saying no to? French fries. I actually just have a really hard time saying no, which has become like not a very good reputation to have at my work because people know that I won't say no. Specifically, students know I won't say no. So they're like, in terms of like supervising them for clubs, extracurriculars, they're like, Miss A, would you mind being my supervisor for this? And like, obviously, if the kids are going to run something, like if I got to just show up and like be like, okay, yeah, they're not dead. They didn't beat each other up. Like, why wouldn't I, you know? And it's like... (sighs) I don't know. I have a really hard time saying no to like to those kind of things, especially when I know like how much if I don't have to do any work on my end to like support it. And all I have to do is like literally just be an adult warm body in a room. What about you? It would also be food. I'm really good at like saying no to a lot of other things. I'm, you know, I'm pulling the rain back on my spending, but something that I always have a hard time on is like, if someone's like, oh, let's go out to eat. I'm like, okay, let's go. I'm ready. Don't matter that I already meal prepped for the whole week. Nope. We're going to go because my brain is like, food is food. You know, you got to have food to live. So that's like my brain's rationale for it. You got to eat. (laughs) We would be dangerous together. I mean. What do you mean would be? I mean, we are dangerous together. (laughs) That's all we would do. I was trying to explain (laughs) that we would be dangerous together. Like. In the past, we were very dangerous. It'd be like one of us would hit each other up, be like, hey, you know, it sounds great. Olive Garden. <laughs> Literally. Hey, have you baked a cake recently? Let's just make something. Let's have some desserts today. What about cookies? You want some cookies? Oh, you know what? I just saw a quiche recipe. Let's make some quiches. <laughs> it would be really bu- It'd be like, hey, we have some errands to run. And the first thing we do is like, okay, so in between these errands, where are we going to eat? Okay, so we'll eat at home for this meal. And then we're going to go out here. And then we're going to run these errands. And then while we're there, we're going to go out to here. Like that would be how we would plan the day. <laughs> But my favorite was always your, so what time are we leaving at? Because I need to know if I'm eating breakfast at home or with you. <laughs> Literally, it's a man, like breakfast is so major for me. So yes, I, mm, that's my thing. I have a hard time saying no to food based questions. <laughs> well, Emma, where can people find the podcast? You can find our podcast on Instagram and Twitter at the Tea with Crema. You can also stream our podcast anywhere that you like to stream your favorite podcasts. We are also on YouTube at the Tea with Crema. If you'd like to send us a cup of tea or just if you would simply like to tip us, we are also on Venmo at the Tea with Crema. We hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye.